Welcome to the new episode of Lunch with Experts and today's expert is Dr. Stuart Ray who has decades and decades of experience in academics, research as well as private practice. He has won several awards over his distinguished career and has lectured all around the world. Even the wall behind me doesn't have enough space to show all his accomplishments. Dr. Stuart, it's really a privilege to sit beside you and do this show. Well, thank, thank you very much, and um, it's a, a privilege to uh, have you ask me to do this. I uh, um, also an opportunity to try something very different uh, uh, in terms of my, my usual diet. It's uh, quite spicy. <laughs> thank you. So today we'll be talking about the current buzzword in pediatric dentistry, silver diamond fluoride was some utterly delicious which Dr. Stuart Ray already tried because he could not control himself with some tangy coriander chutney. So Dr. Ray, let's begin. So how has SDF changed pediatric dentistry? Um, silver diamine fluoride is, is one of those things that uh, occurs in, in uh, a profession, in this case in, in dentistry and specifically pediatric dentistry, that that I consider to be a true game changer. Um, just as a little background, um, silver diamine fluoride, which has really been um, been commonly used here in the United States for probably the last three or four years. I think mm -hmm. it really resurfaced in about 2014. But I'm embarrassed to say that when I was a, um, a young faculty member uh, at UCLA back in the early 1970s. We had a visiting professor uh, from Japan who came to visit us. And um, in the course of one of our discussions, and in fact it was a seminar with, with our residents, he brought out this little blue bottle that, in, in his case it was a blue bottle, and he said, have you guys tried this? It's, it's something we've been using in Japan for some time. And it's very effective in arresting caries in children. Well, being sitting on the ivory tower at UCLA, where we're supposed to know everything and and um, and and we're the authorities on everything, um, we really just ignored um, this suggestion of something that we might try to uh, reduce the severity of caries in children. Uh, so that would have been about 1972. Um, fast forward now to 2014. That's so almost comes 40 close years. comes close to half a century later. Wow, we've rediscovered or we've discovered something that has been very effective, and I can tell you that um, um, it's a game changer in terms of. Um, the way it has allowed us to treat very severe early childhood caries in very young children. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> prior to the advent of and the introduction or reintroduction of silver diamine fluoride, uh, we were constantly faced with children as, as young as 18 months to two years of age who already had the ravages of, of Early childhood caries, and by the time they are, by the time the kids are uh, two and a half or three years of age, they're at a point that they need to be treated immediately. And in those days, the only option was to take them to the hospital and treat them under general anesthesia. Um, coincidentally, with uh, about the same time that silver diamine fluoride was. Uh, was reintroduced uh, to, at least to American dentistry, uh, the Federal Drug Administration came out with a warning telling us that subjecting to children under three years of age to general anesthesia had an increased risk of affecting their cognitive development. So in other words, subjecting these children to the, the process of general anesthesia ran a risk of reducing these children's ability to operate and function cognitively. Sent up a, a real red flag, what, are, and, and what in the world are we going to do with all these children age 18 months to 24 months to through three years of age who already have 
advanced caries to the point that if you allow these to progress for another three to six months, you're certainly going to be dealing with, with teeth that need to be extracted rather than treated. Well, at about that time, um, um, a company uh, called Elevate, actually it was uh, some dentists in Oregon and Washington, who brought uh, silver diamine fluoride um, to the market under a label called Advantage Arrest. It's 38% silver diamine fluoride. And this has given us the ability to preemptively and, and, to, um, and to, as a, as a holding um, type of treatment, to be able to apply silver diamine fluoride to these infants' teeth which are severely decayed mm -hmm. and, and, and eroded and have significant cavitation and essentially arrest the cavities with somewhere in a 90% plus success rate. So this has given us the ability to take these kids, get them through a period of time, this critical period of time that without um, silver diamine fluoride, surely these, many of these teeth are going to abscess and break down to the point that they're not salvageable. And has allowed us to get them to a point that they're over three years of age, we can now safely and with some confidence that we're not affecting their cognitive uh, development, take them to the operating room or in some cases treat them under, um, under sedation to repair their dentition. Um, one of the drawbacks that a, a lot of people said, well, I, I don't think this is going to be very successful. You'll never have parents accepting the fact that these brown lesions now turn black. Um, and it actually has been quite the contrary. I cannot think of more than one or two cases here in the last two or three years mm -hmm. where we've had parents refuse the application of, of silver diamine fluoride because it's going to turn black. We show them pictures of mm -hmm. what these things are going to look like. And once they learn and understand why we're using it as a, uh, as a, a way to delay having to treat their children under anesthesia, they invariably are accepting of it. So um, in that way, it's been a real game changer. And interestingly enough, we are now have going on four years of, of evidence-based mm -hmm. data here uh, that shows that many of these kids um, don't actually then go to the operating room to be treated. Their parents say, well, you know, this looks kind of bad, but um, is there anything we can do to mask or to cover up this black? I, we don't see the need to mm -hmm. go undergo on a general anesthesia procedure. And um, we have a lot of these kids now that for four years of time, they've had SDF treated mm -hmm. teeth that have not abscessed have not had to be extracted, have not have to be, have to receive full coverage uh, crowns, uh, cosmetic crowns or stainless steel crowns. And they're getting to the point that they're, some of these teeth are exfoliating, never having been treated. I would say the vast majority of parents don't want their kids to go to school with black, black teeth. ugly teeth. And, and most of them do opt for uh, some sort of treatment. Um, and but many are happy with uh, uh, with a, a, a technique called a smart technique, which mm -hmm. essentially masks uh, the discoloration uh, that we see after so silver diamine fluoride. So can you describe a little bit more about how the smart technique works? Yeah, sure. It's a, it's it's a simply a, the use of a uh, of a glass ionomer, mm -hmm. which is applied to the surfaces, uh, which have been treated with silver diamine fluoride and in many cases there'll be deep cavitations so you're filling these mm -hmm. these cavitations and these black lesions with okay. um, with a glass ionomer which is not perfectly matched in terms of color to the teeth but it certainly masks this objectionable black discoloration mm -hmm. especially on anterior teeth and on posterior teeth 
It actually is very effective in filling these deep cavitations so that they don't pack food and plaque in there that right. is difficult to brush out and that sort of thing. Uh, this, these, um, the smart technique is, is very effective. They, um, oftentimes these glass ionomer um, um, uh, masking procedures need to be repeated, mm -hmm. but it's non-invasive. Uh, you don't have to do cavity preparations. It doesn't take local anesthetic to do it. And as I said, some parents are perfectly happy with this and say, I sure don't see the need to, to do something as, as invasive as general anesthesia or uh, to sedate my child or whatever. But um, again, it's, it's not a perfectly um, uh, cosmetic mm -hmm. solution to, to the problem, but by golly, it's getting these kids through this developmental period that we can now oftentimes at age four and five are able to talk these kids through a procedure in the chair and if it requires local anesthetic just general behavior guidance and that sort of thing is enough to get these kids through the procedure i think in in my career mm -hmm. uh, which is doesn't quite go back to the dinosaur era but close, close I think this has one, been one of the, the greatest changes in the way that we treat kids. And it's, it's a simple thing that is so incredibly effective um, that I, I believe that this has been widely adopted now, at least in pediatric dentistry. Federal Drug Administration has now cleared this as, as, a, um, as a uh, and, and authorized the use of this on young children. Mm -hmm. Previously, as probably most people know, silverdimine fluoride was used on adults uh, for desensitization and treating root caries and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. But uh, um, it's it has been a true game changer. So is SDF equally effective even when the oral hygiene is poor? Um, yes, um, to a, to an extent. Um, it certainly does not mean that that if a child uh, does n is not engaged at home in good hygiene practices and watching the diet and limiting sugars and that sort of thing it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to develop new surfaces and mm -hmm. in new caries however there's really good evidence that when silver diamine is applied to active carious lesions mm -hmm. it has a um, a zombie effect it, it is the term that's been applied in that it it actually does cut down on the bacterial load and the uh, and the production of, of low pH environments um, and so yes it is effective in even in children who do not have um, the parents who have the will to cut back on 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 the sugars and and to brush regularly and that sort of thing uh, it's much, much more effective and I think is a great learning tool for most families and mm -hmm. if they now understand that to keep this, th th this treatment technique mm -hmm. um, to be effective, they need to be engaged in, in, in helping in terms of, of helping with the hygiene, brushing their children's teeth and let of, instead of saying, Here's the toothbrush. Go, go, right. do it at to a three-year-old or a four-year-old, and um, and actually, it's been a great tool. I think in terms of of getting parents to understand what's causing the disease and how to prevent it. Mm -hmm. So I would say that that the rule, rather than the exception, has been that in children who who do receive silver diamine fluoride, we see an in an increasing involvement of the kids and and a a much improved uh, oral hygiene um, and and home care okay regimen. So, are there yeah. any limitations for in re with respect to applications uh, for silver diamond fluoride? Yeah, um, it's well, like everything else, it's nothing's a hundred percent. I would say that the limitations are such that if you have a child who already has a tooth or a lesion uh, which is symptomatic and has been causing pain, um, especially spontaneous pain that they're complaining of a toothache or, mm -hmm. or waking up in, uh, in the night with a toothache. 
it's probably too late to have silver diamine okay. um, uh, fluoride be effective. Mm -hmm. um, it would certainly not preclude the use on on teeth, other teeth in the mouth that may not be um, symptomatic at that point. But if you have a tooth that has an irreversible pulpitis, which is pretty much what is is, it, is mm -hmm. the diagnosis when you have spontaneous pain and 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 non elicited pain through cold or hot or, or eating. Um, that generally means that that tooth is going to have to be dealt with and usually by by extraction. Um, at the very least a pulpectomy, um, but my guess would be that if you took got were able to get x-rays of that tooth, um, you're going to find that there's there's frication involvement or or peri periapical radiolucencies. It's, it's beyond it's beyond saving. Um, other contraindications may be that um, if, if a patient has a rare allergy to silver, um, certainly would probably want to delay using this on a child who had um, any apthos or, or um, uh, acute stomatitis, uh, mm -hmm. uh, herpetic stomatitis, any, uh, any open active lesions, you'd certainly probably want to delay it until okay. the infection were cleared up. But um, it's, um, it's relatively very safe. Um, and I, I would say that the most common uh, negative uh, sequelae of using silver diamine fluoride if, is if you happen to get it on any of the soft tissues, mm -hmm. um, lips, uh, tongue, gingiva. It is going to discolor those okay. tissues for a period of time. Okay. Um, and that will dissipate or go away within, within a week or two. Uh, but you always want to be very careful that you're not getting it on your clothes. Um, I've actually, mm -hmm. um, actually, had to send two or three ties uh, to the to the recyclers because I've gotten some silver diamine on them. It does stain cabinet tops. It does mm -hmm. stain floors. So you want to be very careful with it. And we always advocate that we use Vaseline around mm -hmm. a child's lips and be really careful uh, with an assistant helping. Um, to restrain a child that tends to be young and squirming and, and right. dodging around. But um, for the most part, it's very safe and very few contraindications. So, SDF has so far been the game changer in pediatric dentistry. Thank you so much, Dr. Stewart. This was indeed a great dis discussion. <laughs> thank you for enlightening us with your and, wisdom. And, and thank you for bringing lunch. Thank it you. was very good. Yes, and thank you everyone for supporting the show. And thank you, Shruti, for always recording some great videos. We'll see you next time. Thank you.